but it's been effective. We've actually stopped terrorists. It's like maybe a couple times, but how many lives have you ruined who had nothing to do with terrorism? I mean, it basically created and perpetuated one of the longest lasting and most destructive buzzwords out there, terrorism, you know? Every step of the way during 9-11, every organization tasked with providing safety and security dropped the ball. Everybody fucked up. They can yep. spend as much as they want to. They can reimburse anybody that they want to if they've uh, incurred damages from terrorism. But redefining words and terms and things like that, that that's something that happened then. Um, and it's still happening now. Um, and I think people have to be wary of that and realize when you're being duped. Another kitchen sink microscopy. I'm Casey Rochford, and uh, we would really enjoy it if you would like and share this video and subscribe to the channel. Um, I'm even thinking of subscribing to the channel, actually. <laughs> yeah, I haven't yet myself. I should, I should probably do that. Um, I'm, uh, I'm Eric Rosenblatt, and don't forget, we write our own music, lots of it, like a shit ton of music. So stick around to the end of the episode and you'll hear something new and our music's available on iTunes and Spotify and such places. Um, and if you're feeling adventurous, you can go to our website at ksmvidcast.com and get news and information and more and keep the conversation going, um, in a non YouTube place. So, uh, Casey, what, what do you want to talk about today? Well, I've grabbed myself a large beer, so we're probably going to talk about something that we're going to ramble on for a while about. Ooh, do I need more than three beers for this one? Because three beers might be all right. I think there's about three beers in, well, <laughs> four beers in here. Yeah. <laughs> it depends on the, the concentration, I suppose. I may have already had one beer. Yeah, uh, I, me too. It's okay. <laughs> uh, but no, yeah, today uh, is, is 9-11, so... Um, in keeping with the spirit of, of last year, I thought maybe we should talk about something that is somewhat related to the events of, of that horrible day. Um, and uh, maybe we should, we should mention um, that there's a, a really cool music video that we did. Uh, it's a tribute to 9-11. Um, one of our recent guests on the show uh, acted in it, and that was really cool. He lost somebody in, in those attacks. So yeah. uh, I, I really urge you to check it out. We'll, um, you know, put, put a link somewhere in some corner of the screen. Maybe. Yeah. Um, and check out the last nine 11 video. Um, yeah. Especially uh, the end. That was man. When I was editing that, uh, yeah, uh, it hits you right here, man. Uh, yeah. So uh, um, I think, you know, the particular aspect that, that we could ramble on about forever. Um, I, I'm guessing you're probably talking about like the uh, legislation that followed said event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Patriot Act. Yeah, and 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 the Homeland Security Act too. Those were both kind of like coincidental with that particular event, and they both have their own issues, shall we say? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's. Wow. That. I, I mean, I'm, I don't know how we can like keep this down to like an hour ish. Um, yeah. There's a million directions to go because it's so screwed up. Like, yeah. I mean, well, they, it, they rushed the legislation on it. Like it was like 45 days that 
Okay, so they drafted like almost 200 pages of like legal ease, which is not quick. All right. It took me like, uh, my book was about that long. It took me three months and that was fast. Right. <laughs> yeah. And you weren't writing legal text. You were just telling a story. Right. So yeah. How, how it was coming out, you know, like, and this must have been ready to go is what I'm saying. Yeah. I, and I'll get to that actually. Um, at some point I, I have a note to get to that. Mm. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's a really good point. Now, either it was ready to go or they had a massive team of legislative writers like banging away on typewriters. Well, okay. That probably by then they were, they were using like IBM PC juniors or something like that. <laughs> I mean, we, you, you, department of defense finally retired the five and a half inch floppy just last year. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> If they had an, a team that put that together in 45 days, that would imply that the government is efficient. Yeah, that's a really good point. And <laughs> I mean, I do love a good conspiracy. Um, and that does kind of smell like a conspiracy of sorts. Um, that, that's, a, that's interesting. Um, I hadn't really thought about that i know that it was passed very quickly and and with very little review like I, I think honestly i'm pretty sure that nobody read it and they were just like yep this is what we want to do because new york was attacked and the pentagon was attacked and whatever we have to do to keep america safe or something like that and it's like well that's exactly how hitler's come into power yeah um you know that's how you get the enabling act um it ooh, man. Yeah, so I mean, they they could basically do pretty much whatever they want um, to spy on their own citizens. Like, it's not really outward facing at all. It's all inward facing. And yeah, it's yeah, and the whole point is, well, yeah, that, that's true. It's supposed to like the claim is it's outward facing, um, but yeah but how, right. could, how could we enact legislation that impacts people that don't even live where the legislation can be enforced you know so well, of course of course it's inward facing well it's very easy you just you have the cia do your dirty work um and i'll get back to them at some point um but yeah that, that, that that's a good point um man uh I, I don't even know where to begin honestly like i i mean well well how about the the sheer amount of waste that, that the Patriot Act has, has brought us. Like, I think the first three years, they did almost 200,000 uh, wiretaps of, you know, citizens that were supposed terrorists. And, you know, they, they made like a whole bunch of drug busts and all, all kinds of, you know, uh, victimless crime sort of uh, wins for, for the government. Mm -hmm. And one, one, alleged terrorist event was was thwarted in those first three years yeah well that's actually a really good point because people critics of this particular series of legislation um are met with a response like oh well you know but it's been effective we've actually stopped terrorists it's like maybe a couple times but how many lives have you ruined who had nothing to do with terrorism you know, and, and that was one of the things I was going to bring up. The, the Patriot Act has been leveraged against U.S. citizens primarily for domestic purposes. That's like all it's been used for. It, it was supposed to be for terrorism. And now average everyday cops are using it to do things that we would think unthinkable in the past. Like we would never allow that. And uh, oh, that brings up another point that I should probably get to at some point. Um, but it's been mostly domestic. Yeah, that brought yeah, us like the no-knock warrant, didn't it? Huh? That brought us the no-knock warrant, didn't it? Uh, I'm not entirely certain that it you, did. You, yeah, you used to have to give warning when you had a warrant. You had to be like, hey, we've got a warrant. We're coming in, you know. Um, that might that might actually be like a DEA related thing, um, you know. Well, and it doesn't matter honestly. The whether it is, it, it is written right. into it. It is written yeah. into it basically, and and it subverts a constitutional amendment. And yeah, uh, 
Um, <laughs> and, and it's resulted in a lot of no knock warrants have resulted in a lot of uh, deaths of innocent people because cops bust into a house with plain clothes and the people there are like, holy fuck, it's a home invasion. And they start shooting and cops start shooting and the, the, the people in the house are dead. Cops are dead, injured, you know, dogs are dead. Like, it's like, what a mess. You know, there's a way better way to do that. And it, it just yeah. makes me angry that, that, that it's come to that. And, yeah. it, it, uh, you know, here, here's the thing, like, yeah, there's the whole like FISA court thing, um, which essentially greenlit everything that came to the table. So you know, they, they issued a warrant for anything. Like it didn't matter if it was connected with terrorism, boom, rubber stamp, go ahead. You know, like, wait a minute. That's, that, that's not how you do things in this. That, that wasn't the intention of our, our particular system. That's not how we're supposed to do things. There's a process. And if the process is basically like you say terrorist and they say, go ahead well, then there's no justice. And honestly, like that's actually one of the things that's kind of led me to lose a lot of faith in the system. Um, Yeah. I mean, it it basically created and perpetuated one of the longest lasting and most destructive buzzwords out there. Terrorism, you know, it's. uh, Yeah. Well, I I mean, mean, it's, it's like that moral panic thing that you've done a minute microscopy about it. It's basically just, creating fear where there doesn't really need to be fear Mm -hmm. and you know it it was not that big of a threat like that that was a horrible occasion that you know sure we could have made some improvements to the way we were doing things but that's not an improvement no and (laughs) and the thing is like every step of the way during 9-11 every organization tasked with providing safety and security, drop the ball. Everybody fucked up. Everybody. And uh, like at the state, like the government, uh, the military, everybody completely just bumbled. It was like just a complete bumblefuck of a situation. And then they turned around and say, oh yeah, yeah. We, you know, it's like, oh no, we didn't do anything wrong. We had, we just need more control. We need more authority. That was the problem. And it's like, you had a lot and you dorked that up. So, yeah. I mean, the things that would really prevent things like 9-11 that would really prevent terrorism from making such a big impact on innocent lives would be to incorporate critical thinking into your public education system so that people can spot this shit. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to get to the causes of all this a little bit later Um, because, well, there's, there's a lot of misinformation there. Um, But just, just going back to like some of the stuff that the Patriot Act uh, enabled things like warrantless wiretapping, like you could just, you know, arbitrarily just read emails, uh, listen to people's phone conversations and now it's gone into like data and everything like essentially nothing is private now yeah government people, agents can can monitor everything you're doing online people worry and, about facebook and alexa and they've got the patriot act doing like way worse than any of those <laughs> oh yeah well and and organizations like facebook they they have uh something that's connected to this like there's a a, i don't i don't know what to call it like a control panel or a access portal i guess where people in law enforcement can read your private messages look at the data freely without any impediment um and and it's not it's not unique to facebook It, it, it it's all over the place google too um, but you know, all in the interest of getting the terrorists and stuff. And it's like, okay, 
like you t- talk, uh, said earlier, it's like, okay, how often has this happened? Once? I remember in the 80s, I, it, as a child in the 80s, I remember like Libyan terrorists and stuff, like whatever, hijacking planes. They wanted political prisoners freed or some kind of something. They didn't do the kind of things that happened on 9-11. This was a unique event that happened once. One time, and we're like, uh-oh, we have to like completely upend everything and completely change the way we do things because of this one thing, which does does bring me to another point. I well, a previous point I was thinking about that I'll I'll get to at some point. I mean, the, the biggest thing that pisses me off is it everyone was up in arms about it for a while. And they were like, this is unconstitutional. And, you know, it was, it was actually kind of a talking point in the uh, 2008 election and Obama, like he was, if I remember correctly, which, which I may not because I was going through my transplant, uh, (laughs) things are a little fuzzy, but I seem to recall him promising he would, uh, at least let it lapse if, if not just do like put it to rest, you know, and he never did that. And in fact, he re-upped it and yep. that, that like, I still overall liked him as far as presidents go, but that really, really disappointed me. Uh, yeah. And, and a thing that disappointed me because on the campaign trail, he was talking about closing down Guantanamo and mm-hmm. I was like, okay, cool. I can get behind that. Like, that's, that's a criminal operation. We have a U.S. military base in a land that's our supposed adversary. You know, well, that's super convenient if you want to hide the goings on there, all the torture and shit. Um, but it, like he was like, oh, we're going to close it down. Eight years he was there. He had a lot of opportunities and they're, it's still going. Like what the hell? I, I what what are there like six people there now? I think like why are we even running it? It's so expensive, and I, you and I are paying for that shit. By the way, <laughs> yeah, uh, for like and, oh, and that, oh paying for it. You want to talk about paying for it. one of the, one of the things that that's built into it is that it has a a no ceiling budget. Oh. They can yep. spend as much as they want to. They can reimburse anybody that they want to if they've uh, incurred damages from terrorism. Mm-hmm. So, so all these all these police precincts right now that are getting torched and shit, and everyone's like, "Oh my god, that's you know that's terrible." Like that, that's it's done and paid for. I guarantee you, they're calling that terrorism, and they're gonna have it paid for. You know, yeah, which means <laughs> we pay for it. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. And going back to Guantanamo Bay and stuff, um, at the time I was like, well, don't we have a justice system? Like if there's a criminal act and somebody commits a crime, we put them through our justice system, right? We have a trial. It's a normal thing. And I heard people saying like, well, they don't deserve a trial. And and I'm thinking... What do we like go into some kind of parallel universe or something? I, I don't understand why we would throw out everything that we hold dear, everything that made things in this country work well and be equal just because there's some people from the Middle East that got pissed off and flew some planes into some buildings. I, 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 I don't understand that, but it's like the thing is, the, the founders of this country saw those kinds of rights, like, you know, all, the Bill of Rights and all the stuff, that speedy trial and everything. They didn't see them as uh, like something that a citizen would have. They saw them as fundamental and universal human rights. And I, that's how I see it. I'm like, I don't care. They're like, well, they're not citizens. Like, I don't give a shit. You know, it's like like I say time and time again, the thing that pisses me off more than anything is a double fucking standard. If you have a belief about something, it has to apply universally or it's null and void. It's meaningless. 
if, if you can't apply it to your worst enemy, then you can't even apply it to your friend or, or yourself. Um, if that makes any sense, I <clears throat> some more beer, I guess. Um, but, but that's the whole thing. Like it, it really annoyed me that they were doing things that if this were a U.S. citizen in some kind of facility in the U.S., we would be throwing Molotov cocktails and protesting and rioting in the streets over this. But apparently... If it's somebody from the Middle East that's over in Cuba, who at the time we couldn't visit, by the way, that that was another mighty convenient factor. Um, you know, apparently that's okay, and 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 that's the thing. It's like the the whole entire system, whatever it is, media, the state, whatever, got people all whipped up into this frenzy where it was like a it wasn't a justice kind of. Uh, response. It was more of a like a vendetta, like like punitive. Like we had to punish these people, destroy them. There were people talking about that, like burn the whole, nuke the place. It's like, wait a minute. It's a handful of people who did something awful. Uh, you wanna you wanna nuke like a million people because like twelve people went rogue like that doesn't make any sense we uh, where is your common sense the other thing is it's it was like a 20 year in the making preemptive strike on where we're kind of headed now because if you think about it they kind of created this moniker of domestic terrorism and when you think about the actual definition of terrorism you know being for like political change or whatever that's like revolution you know, um, well, and, and that, that does go back to the founding of this country. That, that, exactly, that was, yeah, this, this was England. Mm -hmm. We were domestic terrorists by revolting against England. Yeah. So. yeah and, and, and that's the thing. Like, I think the system is originally, as it was originally designed, was designed to accept things like that. Mm -hmm. That eventually, either things would get so corrupt and so distorted that people just couldn't take it anymore or it would deviate so far from the original idea that people couldn't take it anymore. Yeah. And, and I yeah. think that's okay. Um, yeah, within a certain context, like, I, I mean, now they've, now they've created an inbuilt system to sway the pliant minded masses into thinking that, you know, the people in the streets that are protesting are terrorists and they, they're bad and they should be squished, you know? And, well, and, and that, that, uh, the people do their work for them and it's like the perfect system. It goes back right. to what I was just saying, like conflating citizens, like average everyday people going about their business with political extremists or government agents or something like that. It's like, they're not the same. And yeah, that, that whole word terrorist, terrorist has been thrown around. So, well, I've got 1984 right here. Um, <laughs> highly recommend, you know, Newspeak, uh, redefining words and terms and things like that. that that's something that happened then. Um, and it's still happening now. Um, and I think people have to be wary of that and realize when you're being duped. Um, and like you said, I think you said, uh, hang on, I better have some more beer. Uh, <laughs> but an educated populace, like people who who have common sense and and are aware of things, are able to see through the ruse much better than people who don't have said education. I guess. Yeah, and I mean, it, it's not so much formal education. Like, it, it's one of those things that's kind of hard to teach. You almost have it or you don't, but I mean, it's something that you can learn. It's more of a street smarts thing, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not saying you have to go to college or anything like. No, <laughs> right. No, I mean, I I took those classes in college, but you know, like I never saw a class like that before I went to college. And, yeah, you know, like I'm just saying, maybe it should be a more accessible class. Like it should be part of a a standard K through twelve curriculum somewhere in there. 
Well, well, okay, I mean, that would be good. Um, but what if the powers that be don't want the general populace to be that educated and that wise and that able to discern yeah. fact from fiction? That you know, maybe being more pliable and manipulatable makes us better sheep. I guess. Eh, eh, I I don't know. I I mean, yeah, that's pretty. I mean, it's it's pretty glaringly obvious that's what's going on. Yeah. You know, um, and it's not even like, I mean, I guess it is technically a conspiracy theory, but. No, 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 no. It's, we're, we're not conspiracy theorists. We're conspiracy researchers. <laughs> <laughs> you got to redefine the words, man. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. New speak. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're, uh. We're conducting uh, uh, conspiracy uh, thesis statements and, and uh, doctoral yeah. dissertations. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, the, the fact is, we know there is a conspiracy theory out there somewhere in the cloud, in the ether, and we're merely uh, discussing it and and researching it. Yeah, simple as that. And 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 telling everybody what what we learned. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, the one that the one that got me, uh, like I thinking about the uh, Patriot Act, is the gag orders. Um, I think I remember telling you at some point when we were running the business about a story about a guy running a business who a bunch of agents from I, I, Homeland Security. I, I who knows these days? Like a bunch of federal agents came in. And said, you got to give us access to your computers. And the person complied. They, they downloaded everything out of the computers. And then they forced them to sign a gag order saying they couldn't even tell their own business partner that these people had been there and downloaded this data. Yeah. Like, Those are uh, NSLs, I think they call them, um, where they yeah. basically get to go and look into anything they want to about anyone they want to and anyone they need help from can't talk about. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Which is, is difficult because what if they're doing something wrong? What if they're just like pursuing, you know, they're stalking an ex lover or something like that, which by the way has happened many times, <laughs> you know, all you have to do is slap that label of terrorist on things and anything goes, which it's like, Yet again, it's like it's happened once. One time we had some kind of catastrophic event and all of a sudden we throw everything away and say, well, let's do it this way. And everybody's totally on board with it. Yeah. Like, I, I, it's, and think, think of all the technology that kind of sprung up around the t- same time. Smartphones, Wi-Fi, all of these things that are oh so convenient, but also convenient for the government to use to enact the Patriot Act at their will. Yeah, that's why in 2020, I still use a BlackBerry. (laughs) There are reasons for that. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. oh man. Well, in, in speaking of the technology, I mean, we have to talk about software and stuff like that too. Um, and I think a good way to preface this, part of the conversation um, before moving on to something I think is really important. Um, A very good way to preface this would be to say Edward Snowden, hero or traitor? Well, hero. I like, yeah, we did a whole episode on whistleblowing and how like important that is. I mean, I mean, just, Look at any company you work for. They've probably got a whistleblowing policy that protects you from it because it's important. You know, if something shady is going on, you need to tell someone about it. Yeah, and it's actually important for the company yeah. too. But both from a standpoint of public perception and from a standpoint of operational structure and things like that. Like you don't want that because that's the fastest yeah. way to bring a company down. I'm looking at <laughs> you, Enron. Yeah. <laughs> The, the only way, the only places it's looked down upon is in shady criminal organizations. Oh, <laughs> uh, you mean like the like federal the government? government? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, because it, 
Snowden is consistently labeled as a traitor. Like, you know, he, he's, where is he now? I, I, hasn't he been like in the Russian embassy for think, like a uh, decade? They don't do extradition or something. So. Yeah, like, I mean, he basically gave up his whole life because he thought this was very important. And it is. Yeah. Like, the information that was released, and, and the thing is, people keep saying, oh, he's putting lives at risks and stuff like that. And it's like, where? I don't see any names. I don't see anything. I just see a bunch of shady ass shit that the federal government's doing that it shouldn't be doing. Like, it, so you're, basically, you're just butt hurt that, you, that, that your dark goings on were brought to light. And, and I, you want to label him. And yet again, they pull those strings to try to get people emotionally, in, you know, twist them emotionally and say that he's a traitor. And it's like, no, nah, I think that, I think the guy is a, he's a fucking hero. Like he, he gave up everything because he, he thought this was important. And yeah, like if you look into the stuff that he released, it's like, whoa, there's a sea of super questionable activities, like legally and ethically. And, and, and then it brings up the question, it, who's the traitor here? Is it Snowden or is it the state? I would argue it's the latter, <laughs> but that's, that's just me. Yeah. Well, it, it, yeah, the whole term whistleblower, you know, like, like I was saying, whistleblower policies at work, typically it's seen as a good thing. They protect you. In the, in the streets, you're called a rat. And in the government, you're called a traitor. You know? on, well, on either end of those shady spectrums, they've got a different buzzword for it, but it's all the same. Well, and it's contextual, too. It's like it just depends on whose side you're working for. Like, if you're a whistleblower whistleblowing the Soviet Union, you're a hero. But if you're a whistleblower whistleblowing the USA, you're a traitor. Mm. Um, and and that, that that goes back to the age old statement or question, I guess, or yeah, it's kind of a statement. One man's freedom fighter is, or one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. Like it's all subjective. You know, the, the, here's the thing. Like, the politicians at the time at 9-11, they, they, they said over and over, they just drilled it, just like fucking pounded it into people's heads. These people hate our freedoms, and that's why they attacked us. But that was a total con. Yeah. The, 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 the real reason was predominantly like CIA and black ops involvement in, in these areas relating to the petrodollar. Like, it, we're gaming these people the for our own benefit. And then, you know, if somebody calls us out, we're like, oh, traitor. Like, no, 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 you're the traitor, dickhead. <laughs> the Petra uh, dollar, was, wasn't Petra like a Christian rock band? It was. Actually, Petra is really cool. I, I, I grew up, I have like a whole stack of their cassettes from back in the day. They were good. <laughs> no, this is the Petro dollar. Oh. So it's the idea that oil is tied to the value of the dollar because, eh, let's face it, the, the U.S. dollar has zero value. It's a faith currency. So mm. it's tied to the value of oil, the trade price of oil and stuff like that. And yeah, so that's, that's why we have all these wars that, you know, Afghanistan, uh, Syria, Iraq, Libya, you know, you just rock again. Yeah, yeah. You go down the list and, and we're we're gunning for Iran for the same reasons. Um and it's all about it's all about economics. Well, fake ec economics, I guess, but yeah, so the petrodollar is kind of like the idea that the only thing propping up our currency is oil and us killing people over that to maintain the perception of value uh, in that regard. I'll, I'll, I'll do a, I'll do a minute microscopy about that. Well, it'll probably be like a five minute microscopy because <laughs> it goes deep. Yeah. Um, hmm. 
I yeah. don't know. Do, do you ever think it could go away, though? Well, what? The, the Patriot Act. Uh, maybe if the right person came around who just didn't re-up it. Because it, it, it keeps, like, sunsetting, and you have to kind of, like, keep lifting it back up again, I guess. It's like a rubber ball or something. I mean, but is it just a matter of the president signing something, or is this a process that has to go through House and Senate and then to the president, like, normal? Or I, I'm not entirely I don't know how sure. renewals go on stuff like this. So. I think it's, like, it's a cascading kind of thing. Like, every portion of that has to agree. And if somebody doesn't, then that's it. I, well, I mean, I, yeah, know, I, mean, I, I, I guess that's the hard that. part when, when a president, like, promises that they're going to do something. It, it's really kind of contingent on the the balance of power in the house and say well it's true and that that's that's why i like take presidential candidates promises promises with a grain of salt it's it's kind of like uh you know if you're running for uh class president in school like you you, you don't have the authority to do like 99 percent of the stuff you say you're gonna do yeah. Um, I mean, that's not to get too far off topic, but that's probably the, the one thing that Joe Biden actually has going for him is that he's basically a Republican. So if the House and Senate don't really change, he, he's probably going to be able to actually do a lot of stuff. It's just he doesn't really have a lot of plans to fix things very well. <laughs> so. Well, that's true. And, and he, is, he is losing his mind. I mean, we have to be honest here. Mm-hmm. The guy is get going down the dementia direction and and you know it's like i uh, who if if i told myself my 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 like 2000 self that what what it was going to be like in 2020 i would i i'd be like yeah you're not a time traveler um <laughs> that there's just no way that could be um yeah uh, but yeah, you can't you can't make this shit up are you crazy well and 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 it go we'll probably have to like go into that but i see government as kind of the entertainment arm of the the country um it it's more humorous than anything <laughs> in a certain light if you, if you look at it a certain way it's kind of like a stand-up comedy show comedy um, or tragedy Ooh, the two go hand in hand. I mean, you know, there's the whole like mass like. Oh, now round. we're getting into literature and. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you you wanted to kind of segue into software though, right? What? Well, where were you going with that? Oh well, that that was the whole uh, Snowden Snowden, Snowden yeah. thing. Like, what, is, what, what does he have to do with software exactly? Well, he he revealed all of the crazy ass shit that the NSA and and other such organizations had at their disposal to spy on us. (laughs) And, and, you know, the thing is a bunch of quote unquote conspiracy theorists before Snowden's revelation said, Hey, by the way, this kind of thing is happening. And people laughed and they were like, that could never happen. And then he released us and they're like, Oh shit, this is real. Like, Oh my God. This goes deep. They're like really wow. I mean, it, I, I encourage everybody to look at the Snowden files, WikiLeaks, things like that. Like, really try to understand what is going on and how far down the rabbit hole it goes because it's dark. And I, well, yeah. yeah. The only thing I like, if I wanted to apply healthy skepticism to it the only thing i would be concerned about is is the difficulty in confirming the sources well you can't be the the thing is you can't because it's top secret um you you kind of just have to like and like what's what's taken out of context and stuff too, you know? Well, if you look into this, it's like uh, you you don't need context for some of this. Yeah. Um, it it yeah, and and it's wholly unnecessary. But that's basically what happens when you have 
com- the, the, the reins completely unleashed. Like there's no restriction on what you can do because terrorism, you know, and that's what we have. We have organizations doing things that, well, like I said earlier, it would be unthinkable decades past. Like we, we would be like, what? Like not even the Soviet Union would do shit like this. And we're doing this to our own citizens. Like we, we ooh, man, I, 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 I don't want to go too far, but um, yeah. just, I'll just say like, look up some of that stuff, like read the documents, look at the uh, PowerPoint presentations and things like that, that, that they have. And it's almost like what you see is this kind of perception from the state from the agents of the state of the average citizen as being kind of like just a dupe, like chattel, you know, like, Oh, we're just a bunch of toys that they can play with. And uh, it uh, it pisses me off. Try not to get pissed off here. Yeah. Um, The thing I hate about laws is that they're all written in this legal ease, which is, supposedly supposed to be very specific and hard to misinterpret but really what it is used for is to obfuscate what's really being said well and and it's also to it's vague enough and broad enough that no matter what the situation you can twist it to your own means yeah it's a horoscope (laughs) yeah yeah, and, uh, and you know, I, I hear people say time and time again, like, ignorance of the law is no excuse. And I'm like, have you read the law? Like, just <laughs> sit down and read some of that shit, and you'll be like, oh, I got a migraine, you know? Oh, yeah. Like, if- even lawyers, judges cannot make sense of this. They're, they're sitting down debating constantly about this stuff. And it's like, if they can't even agree, well, then how is it legitimate? Have you ever walked through a law library? Oh, like, like if, if ignorance of the law is no excuse, um, be my guest, go and read every goddamn law there is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but the thing is the genesis of these laws are just politicians penning something down on paper. Well, they're typing now. Um, but you, you get what I'm saying. Like it's arbitrary. It's just somebody just writes something down. A couple people sign it. And suddenly you're on the hook to obey it. Like, what the fuck? Like, why? You, 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 this didn't get any kind of review or anything? Like, ooh, man. Yeah. And that's exactly how this went. Um, so, uh, like, oh, man. Okay, I'm getting fired up. But <laughs> maybe, maybe that's good. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, wish we, I wish we had a, a system that was – a little more input from the people, you know, things, things like that should not be just up to the quote unquote representatives, uh, you know? Yeah. Well, and, and, and there's something to be said for direct democracy in, in a sense, like technology does allow for that. Um, though I do have a problem with the fact that most people don't have common sense. Um, not everybody is well read, well educated, and intelligent. Um, I, I mean, not 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 to like diminish the average well, person. No, but I, I think I, they're I, all I pretty cool. coming from. I mean, I make that very argument for voting. Period. Like, I would I would rather not have everyone vote because most people aren't going to take it seriously, and I would rather have a few people voting passionately and doing their due diligence than to have everybody vote based on who's cuter or something. Yeah. 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 You, you, you just vote down a a color like blue or red D's or R's or something. No, we need critical people, critical thinkers, people that really criticize things to, to make decisions. Um, But (laughs) sadly they're few and far between nowadays. Um, Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, and, and I mean, that's here's another digression. But you know, people always rag on you for sitting out a vote. But it's like, 
that that is a choice in itself. But you're basically deferring to what's going to go on, either either out of you know like um, admitted defeat, like oh, I see where this is going, and I'm not going to change it anyway, um, you know, because your one voice really it doesn't make a, a difference. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, or or you're like, well, none of these choices really align with with what I believe in, so you know my convictions are that I'm just going to be like, well, I'm fucked either way. So, you know. Well, and, and I would wish that more people would vote that way. Like, exactly. Like, on your convictions, the things you really care about, like, listen to what somebody's saying and, you know, make a decision based on that. Not, not on, like, partisan lines or something like that. that. That's exactly how we get divided. And that's exactly how things get fucked up. Yeah. You know, you like look at what people are saying. Look at the person's personality. Go, go and talk to somebody. You know, shit. Walk out outside once in a while. Um, yeah, that. Oh man, I oh I'm I'm about to go down a completely different direction. <laughs> but no, you make a really good point. Um, man. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, it's a little bit of a di di digression, but it, it's a worthy one. Not that we uh, never do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> never. <laughs> so, going back to the Patriot Act, um, I I have the TSA in my list of things to talk about, but you know what? Yeah. I, out of principle, I'm just not going to talk about the TSA. Because you know what? Fuck you, TSA. Fuck you. Yeah. That's all I got to say. I, what exactly? I don't even like remember. I mean, I never flew before the age of the TSA. I know there was security. There was metal detectors and stuff. Yeah. But who, who manned that? Was it just airline employees? Yeah, yeah. It was security provided by the airline yeah. system itself. So <laughs> what's wrong with that? <laughs> yeah, or what happened to air marshals? Yeah, You know, if there were enough air marshals on planes at 9-11, none of this would have happened. Yeah, I mean, like, well, here's the point I'm trying to make, right? So, so the Patriot Act happens, and they're like, okay, now we need the TSA. Let's, let's plug them in. Let's uh, destroy these jobs in the airline and replace them with government jobs. Um, mm -hmm. All because of, you know, this one government act or whatever. But I mean, we have like the FDA and we still have private companies that make drugs and put food together and stuff. It, it wasn't like the government created like the, the hamburger division and, <laughs> and you know, like, all of a sudden like McDonald's guys are out of work and there's a whole bunch of people being like, you want pickles? Step aside, please, sir. Yeah. Uh, Got to frisk you. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, and 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 the TSA has been known for many egregious acts, like groping small children and grandparents, and all kinds of crazy things, and like completely ridiculous, arbitrary rules that don't make any sense. Oh man, and the thing is, the TSA is security theater; they're not actually capable of providing any security, but they make a big show of it. At our expense, by the way, don't forget that, we pay for that shit. We pay for those backscatter x-ray machines um, and all that stuff. And then they like, oh, take your belt off and, you know, take your shoes off and, you know, that, you know remember what? that stuff? Like yeah. the yeah. shoe bomber and all that? Like, well, God damn it, you guys are fucking idiots. You know, right right now during this pandemic, there are there are literally people walking into an airport, and somebody stopping them and be like, "Oh, sir, you got to put a mask on." And they're like, "My freedoms!" Blah, 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 and they put the mask on, and then they go to the TSA line, and they're like, "Take your shoes off." And they're like, "Okay." Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, uh, do you see a, a difference here? Really, that's a good like, point. Yeah, <laughs> man. Oh, more beer. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man. I so I feel like like you had said, you had alluded to early on in this conversation how there was some legislation waiting in the wings. Yeah. Way too much 
text to have been written in the time span in which it was supposed to have been written very um, as, as, as eloquently as it was written as right. well you know very, very implausible as the mythbusters might say mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> like we're not saying it's a conspiracy but it's implausible yeah it's <laughs> a little fishy um ha have you heard of uh the hegelian dialectic the what is that the like irish or uh no it, it's a philosophical kind of thing Hegel. Um, well, uh, people should look it up. Um, it's complex. But in a nutshell, the concept is synthesis or thesis, synthesis, antithesis, uh, otherwise known as problem, reaction, solution. The idea being that you could want to do something right? Like, let's say you want to do something. You want to change the way things are done, but nobody's going to, like, it, it's never going to fly. Um, so what you do is you create a problem and then people react to it. And then you magically have the solution, which right. is the thing you wanted to do that nobody would agree to before. Um, and in the context of the problem, they're willing to agree to it because it's so big, right? Like 9-11 happens. Like, yeah. well, and, and uh, oof, man, I, there's so many moving par parts. Uh, and I might have had a little bit too much beer, but I, I'll try to I'm gonna work through it. Um, What's that called again? Hegelian Hegel? dialectic. Hey, okay. And that was based off of a guy's philosophy or something? Yeah, Hegel. Oh yeah, so I always thought Hegel was when when you sold something on Craigslist for a hundred bucks, somebody spelled, came back and offered you five. It's spelled <laughs> differently, yeah, H E G E L. Um, so there was a program. I, I feel like it was probably like in the '90s or something, much like the NSA stuff and and all this. Um, oh man. Too much beer, oh, power through it. Um, <laughs> um, but there was, a, there was a program called Total Information Awareness. And the idea was if the government just knew everything about us, they could, it, it almost goes into like pre-crime, like, uh, like they could predict crimes and stuff like that. Like, man. Philip K. Dick shit. Um, yeah. I, I heard somebody else talking about this just recently. That they're actually trying to push something like that, the, the pre-crime thing. Yeah. Well, the TIA program uh, was shut down because it was unconstitutional or found unconstitutional. Um, but the people involved desperately wanted for it to be a thing. So I feel like they probably drafted this legislation in anticipation of an event. I mean, you know, you don't let a good catastrophe go to waste, uh, <laughs> as has been said. Um, so, so maybe it was like waiting for a while for the right time. And they were like, okay, now's the time. <laughs> I don't know. Um, let me ask you this. Do you think people that, that create policies like that do it out of genuine care for their country or are they just fucking sadists? I think, I think they're, they're sociopaths, honestly. Like there's, there's a lot of control. Um, the desire to control people, the desire to like be the boss or something like that. And, yeah. and, you know, be the hero. Oh, I'm going to save people. I mean, it's probably like a spectrum of reasons. Um, I don't think there's an altruistic uh, thread amongst them, honestly. Yeah. Like, I, because if you're altruistic, you you would not go this way. No. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, 
I mean, to, to, to go uh, blatantly go against the Constitution and then try to justify it as, you know, like law and order. I mean, like, oh, Nixon no. and Trump are both like the law and order presidents, and, and we know how well Nixon turned out. So. Well, yeah, to blatantly, blatantly go against the Constitution and say, well, we're defending the Constitution. <laughs> like, nah, I, I take issue with that. You're defending the federal government. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which does not always have our best interest in mind um <clears throat> oh man fun time well yeah I'm maybe <laughs> maybe back in the day i'm For a couple years there, <laughs> there, there I, I don't have a problem with things like resetting if it's done right yeah. but i feel like it's not going to be done right because well things like the patriot act have, have prevented any possibility of that happening i think like or yeah. at least made it extremely remote possibility because you know, like I kind of alluded to um, whether or not these things are, are connected, the Patriot Act combined with our dependence on connectivity through Wi-Fi, through smartphones, through Alexa, you know, all the, all those things while they're, they're great for humanity. They're also creating a backdoor for tyranny and yes, uh, and it, it basically prevents you from ever having any possibility of organizing something strong enough and wide reaching enough to actually overthrow this government. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't want to use something like Facebook to do that. Well, certainly um, not, but no, you, know, you can't, you can't even do like a newsletter or something through the well, mail, and, you know, because that's probably being monitored too. <laughs> probably. And, and, the thing is like um, the even like covert communications and things like that. Like the, you, we, I, I think we might've talked about it, how the federal government wants to regulate Bitcoin. They want to regulate uh, encryption. So there's a back door. So, Oh, we can get the terrorists. Yeah. All right, you're going to arrest a bunch of drug dealers and prostitutes. Yeah. Bravo. <laughs> Winning. Um, and yeah, and, but people are like completely okay with this. They, they think it's completely fine and it's bullshit. Ooh, man. Oh. And such is the world we live in today. <laughs> I just, I hope we can educate people and make or at least like make people think a little bit about the implications of forfeiting your safety and security and privacy to some nameless organization whether you call it a government or whatever um do, do, do you have faith that they have your best interests in mind um do you think they're going to protect you? Um, I don't, but <laughs> knock yeah, yourself I mean, out. <laughs> I, I certainly felt that way about Bernie Sanders, but we all see what happened there. You know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh yeah. I like that was a guy that genuinely cares about people and he just got steamrolled by the government. <laughs> yeah. Well, like a lot of people, he, he, he's somebody that, bucks the system like you can't have somebody that challenges the status quo yeah um i, I mean what we really that... need is we need a ninja we need somebody who goes <laughs> in there talking like trump and then acts like bernie sanders mm -hmm. <laughs> by then it's too late you know mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a good point <laughs> yeah come on fellow ninjas Get on that shit. <laughs> I'm already on record for my beliefs, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, you remember that bump, bumper sticker that I had? Real ninjas, ninjas use lasers. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. It... I mean, that's what it will take, though. It, it'll actually take some ninja shit on, on the part of, of um, you know, real reformists and progressives and stuff you know we basically have to 
trick the people into letting us in there to save them. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, well, it's kind of like less ninja and more Aikido. I think it's like using the force of someone else against them. Mm-hmm. Well, um, well, in actual ninjutsu, uh, they use taijutsu, which is very similar to Aikido. But, but, yeah. Yeah, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> so exactly. it is technically ninja. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think there's some overlap there Mm -hmm. um but i mean that's a good point and 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 i think here's the thing like people are so divided um you know and it's like if you get to the heart of it so many people want the same things they they believe in the same ideas they just have different ways of achieving those things. But the state would like us to perceive those different methodologies as a means of conflict, like a way of pitting each other, pitting us against each other. When if we just sat down and like had a beer at a barbecue, we'd be like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Totally. We figured that out. Yeah. Um, but man, yeah, you know, I, I've been I've been thinking lately, like about you know preconceived notions and discrimination and, and bias and stuff like that. And I started thinking, like, you know, it would it would actually be a really good standard practice for businesses to do to conduct like email only anonymous like interviews just you you're assigned a number randomly or whatever and you answer some questions and they're phrased in such a way that they won't give away your your gender or your religion or any any of that and maybe politics should be that way too like our candidates are selected in an entirely objective way like this is what they want to do this is how they propose we do it and that's it You know, like there's no like hyperbole with it. There's no, you know, uh, shit talking and mudslinging and stuff. Like it's just policy. Yeah. (laughs) Just straight up policy. And and, and maybe not so much like uh, procedural policy, but like more like what you hope to achieve would be better. Because you would find, I think, if you outlined what you hope to achieve, you're, you're going to find that like 99% of people agree. It's just there's a disagreement on like exactly how to do that. But yet people fucking kill each other over that, the, the, those differences. And, and that, that, that does us all a disservice. But it's a great way to divide people and control people. Yeah. Not that, not that I'm, I, I'm okay. <laughs> I feel like it's going conspiratorial, but um, <laughs> I, I, I think, yeah. <laughs> oh man. Ah, oh. yeah, I, oh. yeah. I guess okay. we're a little far off of the Patriot Act now, but. Well, kind of. Kind of. Oh, okay. So, going let, let's let's rewind to the Patriot Act for for a second. Um, I think I still got a, another full beer in here at least. Oh, geez. Well, I got another <laughs> full beer here, so <laughs> oh, on we go. Yes, <laughs> might have had a oh most of a beer. Few of those. Oh no. <laughs> so, what do you think about the phrase? If you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to worry about. Uh, on the surface, I suppose that sounds innocuous enough, but as we mentioned earlier, with the whole ignorance of the law is no excuse and the fact that the law is probably something that no human being could actually live long enough to read all of (laughs) Um, yeah it would take a quantum computer to figure that shit out yeah so it's like 
everybody breaks the law and the law is nothing almost almost nothing to do mm. with morality or ethics it may yeah. be loosely structured around that but whose point, interpretation yeah. whose interpretation so yeah um yeah anyone could become an enemy of the state just by saying hey that's an enemy of the state well yeah and it's been said like you could get 100 percent of the population of the u.s on three felonies it, like that's how convoluted it is yeah um like well, I'm sure you, you're just that. like minding your own business and oh guess what you're a felon <laughs> um which yeah and then you know that carries its own stigma of course like people you say felon and everybody's like oh wow right but it's like yeah you could you, <laughs> i i don't yeah <laughs> Um, well, and the thing is like rules change all the time and what was fine in the past could be retroactively judged to be criminal by the rules of today. Mm -hmm. And then who determines what's right and wrong and what gives them that authority? Like, like, yeah. That's where when when I hear somebody labeled as a felon, I'm like, eh, okay, whatever. Yeah. yeah, no, I um, I mean, I've I I, I recently did a, a minute microscopy on crime, you know, like the the, the word, the concept of crime, mm -hmm. very subjective. It, you know, it we, we hear that and we have instant negative thoughts. We're like, oh, that's bad. Yeah. You know? And and we're just, we're told what a crime is. And then we're conditioned to think, oh, well, that's automatically bad, you know? But then when you stop and think about, well, why is it bad? Probably more often than not, you're like, well, I don't really get it. You know, like, yeah. If you think about prostitution, it's like, is it bad to have sex? Uh, most people probably would say no. Is it bad to sell things? Well, most people would say no. Mm -hmm. Why can't you sell sex? Well, and, and yeah, well, well, going into that, I mean, we've discussed this before, but it's like, you know, what if you can't sell sex for money directly, why is it that you can? Why is it societally okay to take somebody out to dinner and pay for their meal and go to a movie and pay some money and that with the expectation there's going to be sex at the end? Well, that's totally fine. But well, if you just directly exchange, like, you know what? We're going to have sex. I'm giving you money. That's a crime. Oh, and by the way, it's a fucking felony. Like... Jesus Christ, that makes no sense. Social justice warriors would have that be a crime. Yeah. <laughs> Expecting sex for going out on a date. Like, oh, that's, but the thing that's is, it, it's a voluntary <laughs> exchange. Like, both yeah. parties agree. So who's the victim? I, that's the whole thing. Show me the victim. And don't, don't, oh, do not say the government. Like, oh, the state <laughs> is the victim. Like, Oh yeah, right. You know. Oh well, if if the government's the victim, as in like they don't get any cut of it, that's their own fault. If they yeah. legalized it and taxed it, they'd be fine. Well, the fair tax <laughs> like, problem. You fix all that with the fair tax. Like if you you had like a federal sales tax, like done and done. Like you don't have to worry about illegal immigration you don't have to worry about prostitution you don't have to worry about drug dealers none of that stuff matters anymore Go, going back to our second episode damn. yeah oh i'm Wait, hitting I all the marks here <laughs> yeah 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 no i i, I mean yeah the, the fair tax does have a few flaws behind it but 
like the, the overall the overarching principle of it makes way more sense than the income tax well with, yeah with it, like a six foot tall book of rules that gets like shredded and reprinted every year that's like another foot taller exactly it's like you know we're not going to achieve perfection so can we at least achieve rationality like something logical i i would hope at least that um yeah, <clears throat> yeah. oh man there's a guy we've been want, wanting to have on our show lately on economics I kind of wonder what his opinion of the fair tax is. Should I should ping him? That would be yeah. an interesting episode to revisit. I think. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that's the whole thing. Like our entire philosophy is like we revisit things. Yeah. Um, Conversation never done. Yeah. Like we don't know anything any more than the next guy. Um, yeah. yeah. And minds change over time, so... Well, that's true, yeah. You know, like, like I, I used to be super on board with the fair tax, then I became more skeptical of it. You know, maybe I could go back, you know? Like, it, it really just depends. I mean, and things change over time. Like, I don't know that the Patriot Act could change over time enough to the point where I'd be okay with it, but... Yeah, oh, <laughs> and I will never be okay with the TSA. <laughs> I didn't go to my own dad's remarriage because of the tsa so fuck you assholes um <laughs> i didn't go to my dad's marriage was he understanding of that or like... uh, yeah he was yeah <laughs> mostly well where uh, he lives in tacoma where did he get married uh nevada oh, okay he wanted to like the 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 whole like uh the quick and easy sort of yeah like you, you know you go to Nevada you have like the uh what's his name uh the, married by Elvis Elvis yeah the Elvis wedding and all this stuff <laughs> and and that, that's cool but he I I just couldn't I was like yeah I could drive I'll there pronounce you Hoffman and what <laughs> and I can tell falling in love with you. That's going to be a soundbite. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I, I, I think we've covered enough for now. Um, I, I'd i say happy 9-11, but it's not I'm a happy an day. Element. It's probably time to call it. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Oh, man. But yeah, like, well, why don't we just take a moment to, to address 9-11 because, like, the Patriot Act was totally, like, the wrong way to handle something like that. Like, it's, it's fine to feel like you need vengeance. That's, that's totally human. Like, sure. You know, like, I've been but, wrong. But to kill, here's the thing that, that I take issue with. If you want vengeance, you go after the people that were actually responsible. Yeah. Unfortunately, they're all dead. Yeah. We um, did nothing right there. We, yeah. we attacked an entire country because of two. philosophy. Yeah. Well, yeah, two, two countries, countries. Yeah. Because of a philosophy with with no borders, you know, like mm -hmm. and and we attacked our own people. Yeah. And and we're still attacking those countries and our own people like almost 20 years later. So it's like, yeah. And, and though none of those things have happened again, we keep re-upping it. And, 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 and that they we're going to forever say, well, it's not happened again because we have the Patriot Act. Uh, there's you, a huge logical fallacy yeah, yeah. right there. I mean, it's basically like saying, well, there's a God because the Bible says so. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, can't prove you're right, can't so, prove you're wrong, you know? I, I feel like we just opened the door for, like, 10-minute microscopies. <laughs> um, but I'd like to hear other people's opinions about this. Um, uh, I, I feel like we didn't go deep enough. It's probably... We've it's got probably several, a bit of several years to go 
Um, yeah. You know, we'll, we'll have 9-11 episodes every year probably because mm-hmm. that's just such a, a huge demarcation in history that... Well, and, and we're still feeling the repercussions of that. Yeah. It's not like it was an event that happened. It's like it's an event that happened that had legislation connected to it and we're, we're feeling it and you and i could go to prison for that shit like black bag go to guantanamo off you go um like because reasons we we can't get a second stimulus in like three months without people going on vacation and yet the patriot act fell out of someone's ass in 45 days yeah yeah oh man (laughs) <laughs> that's a good point what the fuck <laughs> well and that timeline is really suspicious mm-hmm. and that does bring me back to the he- hegelian dialectic like i think <laughs> and the tia I, I i think this was actually like waiting yeah for the right time right you never let a good crisis go to waste like like um, i said i wrote a book about my own life so I didn't have to put a lot of thought into that. In three months, that was about as many pages as the Patriot Act. And then mine was in like easy to read dialogue, not this legal ease bullshit. So you can't tell me that the horribly inept and not even remotely efficient government somehow put together a coherent legal document of almost 200 pages in 45 days. And passed it and went through all the rigmarole to pass it. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the benefit of your book is it's actually interesting. Um, so there is that. But, but then again, it's like, you know, how are you able to make an interesting story? And they can't, you know. Yeah, I don't have a whole page going that, like, in that, which in the case of, in the extradition and the fact of the nature of this in the case of which that which may <laughs> yeah. what I, I I don't want to downplay the after effects of this because people have actually died. Like this is not a well, light matter. Like th- this is actually really serious. And it is, but I want to point out more people have died as a result of what we've done in response to it. Yeah. You know, well, yeah. Way, well, way more people. Oh, and, yeah. yeah. Like the foreign wars and stuff like that. Fuck that shit. Yeah. And I mean, um, I, I, as, as, a, as a humanist, like I'm counting all people. Like I'm not just counting Americans. Um, you know, people in... Afghanistan and I and Iraq and Iran and and Pakistan and like or Pakistan or whatever you, anywhere and don't worry our about own, the pronunciation it's okay in, including our own military have all died for this bullshit well and that, that that's something I wanted to get into but I mean we're like an hour and 16 into this um, <laughs> but the idea that the soldiers are keeping us free you know like fighting for freedom and stuff it's like no you're dying for bullshit yeah the and, and it's really it it angers me that these kids these people are dying for bullshit reasons like yeah. you're not fighting for freedom I, I i hate to break it break it to you but yeah you're not fighting for freedom this is not freedom this is this is yeah, empire being, building. They're being sold on it. Like, yeah, they, these are really good people with really like altruistic intentions. Yep. They're being sold on the fact that they're doing something great for their great country when really we're the terrorists and they're doing shitty stuff and, and it's not their fault. I'm not mm-hmm. saying that. Like, I, I don't hate soldiers. I respect them a great deal. Well, but, yeah. And, and, and they should be like, a defensive force, not an offensive offensive yeah. force. We, and 
we killed Osama bin Laden. We killed Hussein, even though he had jack shit to do with this. Yeah. We're done. Oh, yeah. And, oh, man. Gaddafi. Get out of there. Remember Gaddafi, uh, by the way. Yeah, he, he wanted to create, like, a gold-backed currency uh, to compete with the petrodollar. Um, oh, and we had to eliminate him. Yeah, and, I mean, oh, that was somehow fighting for freedom. Like, no, stop fighting for bullshit reasons. Well, and then they tell us it's like Hydra. You cut one head off and two more grow in its place. Well, yeah, but that basically just says we're never going to stop. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that, 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 that makes me think about like a Ron Paul ad of all things. <laughs> um, the Chinese soldiers in Texas or something like that. Oh. I don't know. If you look it up, you'll find the video. Um, it's, but, but it's a legit, like those people, they're, they're just minding their own business. And there's a bunch of U S soldiers traipsing around shooting people, CIA doing a bunch of shady shit. Um, I don't blame them. Honestly, like I mean, I, one man's, terrorist is another man's freedom fighter like i don't blame him i would challenge people to an exercise in empathy yeah let's say the cold war went differently let's say we did something fucking terrible to russia or the soviet union or whatever um we did something 9-11 esque to russia and they enacted something similar to the patriot and they invaded us and they were killing us and bombing us all in the name of patriotism and revenge for the thousand or, you know, 3000 people that we killed over there. They're decimating tens of thousands of people over here. They're ruining our way of life. They're ruining our economy. They're like creating worldwide hatred of us over this one act that we did. And, and and throwing in all other kinds of political hyperbole on top of it hmm. just because imagine how that would feel if you were living that right now and that's what the rest of the world sees us as we're a fucking bully yeah and i'd like to like i personally i take the iranian approach the the distinction between the state and the people and I think they have the right mentality. Like, yeah, you can hate the government of a country, but you can love the people. And that's how it is in Iran. I mean, yeah. we, we talked about it before. And I, and I wish in the U.S. we would do that a lot more. Like, see people for who they are, like for their hu humanity. And then loathe the state their terrible awful corrupt government like destructive divisive ugh, ugh. just <laughs> i wash my hands of that shit um but i love the people like the thing is if you get people together um i think people can just like sit down and have a beer and and get along as soon as you put politics into things like inject that in there i think it like starts to make people wild in the head and they, and they lose their minds yeah <laughs> i was having a phone conversation with somebody the other day and it was late at night and it was kind of annoying me because it, started getting political in in a way that was kind of rubbing me the wrong way but then i saw like a little sliver of something that we aligned on and i focused on that and i spoke my mind passionately on that and we aligned and we started agreeing and, and the tension just settled 
and and it just started morphing into a regular conversation and that's that's like that's where the world needs to, to land you know yeah imagine if you did that on a national level i mean i don't want to say like we've solved all of the problems in the world but i i think we're actually approaching that yeah, um I mean, kitchen sink microscopy might go down in history i don't know <laughs> could be yeah oh man well, but that's probably a good point to end on huh <laughs> yeah oh we've we've gone down so many and going down in history and infamy is is uh the great uniter yeah <laughs> and and really we should we should re- unite people like i am a firm believer in pacifism and nonviolence and getting together getting along like that that's what it's all about that's terrorism man <laughs> ooh man <laughs> well that's subjective. Um, <laughs> man. Oh, well, we've we're almost like an hour and a half now. Yeah. Um, I think that's a good point to end on. I just, I want to hear people's ideas. Keep the conversation going down below. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if, if you've got some reason why you think the Patriot Act actually makes sense, I'd love to hear it. Uh, yeah. I doubt I'll see any, but uh, uh, surprise me. <laughs> that's exactly. Uh, and uh, as always, thanks for deep sync diving with us. And uh, let's never forget the uh, people we lost uh, on 9 11 and since. Yeah, and never forgive the CIA. Ah. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's anyway. <laughs> uh. Yeah, all right, have a good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>